In Titus chapter 2, the Bible says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ has appeared to all men, bringing unto us salvation. Grace and Truth Table is the Bible teaching radio ministry of Reverend Wisdom Dafiamakbo of Grace Chapel International. Grace and Truth Table is committed to excellence in communicating biblical truth and its application. And now, Reverend Wisdom Dafiamakbo. Let's pray. Our Father, once again, we appreciate coming to your table. We thank you for your presence in this sanctuary. We thank you for your word that you are about to send to us. We ask in Jesus' name, you give us listening ears that we would truly hear the way the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to hear. That this morning, once again, life will be imparted unto us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let this year be a prosperous year in your life. And as we have said in Grace Chapel, it's a year of overflow. And I wish for you. That everything that God wants to give you will come overflowing. It will not come in small measure, but your cup will be full and your cup will overflow. This morning I'm preaching on the topic that I am in the promised land for my overflow. I am in God's promised land for my overflow and today my text comes from Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 10 to 14 we read the word of God for the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot. As a vegetable garden. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys which drinks water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares. And the eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning of the year to the very end of the year and it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments which I command you today to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul then I will give you the rain for your land in each season the early rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grain your new wine and your oil amen at this point in time when God was taking his people the people of Israel whom he delivered from Egypt he was taking them to the promised land the promised land called Canaan. Incidentally, Canaan was about 11 days journey from Egypt. But for various reasons, they couldn't enter the promised land. Even within one year, they couldn't make it. It took them over 40 years or it took them 40 years before their descendants could enter the promised land. And so, they passed through the place we call wilderness. They were in the wilderness. And they went round, 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 round for 40 years. In order to keep their faith going from time to time. Anytime Moses was talking to them, Moses would speak in a vision language. Moses would speak and tell them where God is taking you to. This is the way the land is. 
Moses would always describe the promised land to them. For instance, all of you here, you know, the promised land was a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. And there were so many precious stones in the promised land. And when you know where God is taking you to, is a land flowing with milk and honey. So if you are going through difficulties now, the vision of that land can still keep you going. So in Deuteronomy chapter 11, when they came to this place, Moses began to speak to them. God was speaking to them through Moses. And he, 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 he described the promised land to them again and compared it with Egypt, where God had delivered them from. Hallelujah. So in verse 10 of my text today, Moses began to speak to them and say, for the land which you go to possess, it's not like the land of Egypt. Egypt was the place where God delivered them from. Egypt was a place of suffering. In Egypt, they became enslaved. They were slaves unto Pharaoh and unto the Egyptians. And the Egyptians used them to build the cities of Egypt, build the pyramids of Egypt, which today is fetching money to the Egyptians because they become tourist attraction. The Egyptians used them as slaves. They whipped them, they broke their back, they oppressed them, they made them work. But thank God, God delivered them. By his outstretched hands, by mighty miracles and wonders, God sent Moses to Pharaoh. And Moses' ministry was all defined in one phrase. He said, let my people go. And so he went and faced Pharaoh and declared the word of the Lord to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. The Lord said, let my people go. Pharaoh said, who is this the Lord? <laughs> And so the battle began. It took how many plagues? Ten plagues. Ten serious plagues. Frogs come invading Egypt. Until finally God played his ace card. You know what is ace card? Have you played card before? There's nothing higher than the ace. Alright? When he played the blood card. And say that all the firstborns will be slain. But when the blood is applied to the doorpost of your house, my people will be saved. Ah, uh, Pharaoh kotod. The resistance of Pharaoh was totally broken. There's nothing, there's no power that can withstand the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has delivered us. Hallelujah. So, here was Moses taking them through wilderness. They couldn't get to the promised land in time. So, at this point, then Moses said, where you are going, it's not like the land of Egypt. And he said, in Egypt, when you were in Egypt, when you planted, when you cultivated your farms, you watered it by foot. Try and understand that. Look, look into your Bible again. Verse 10. Verse 10 he said. You watered it. For the land which you go to possess. It's not like the land of Egypt from which you have come. Where you sowed your seed. And watered it by foot. As a vegetable garden. You watered your farms by foot. Think about that. You know what Moses was saying? That for them, what they planted for the things to grow, they have to go some distance and fetch water in a bucket. Because Egypt was a flat land, dry. Dry land was desert-like. The, the land was not that fertile. 
The only thing they have there was River Nile. The River Nile would overflow once in a year. And so when the River Nile was overflowing, then they would do some irrigation. And when they did their farms, there was no water on the farm. So can you imagine how much produce they were getting from their farms? Very little. For their farms to be watered, Moses was very clear. They watered it by food. It means they fetched the water. They traveled long distance, fetched the water, came back water, go again, that distance, come back. In some villages in Ghana, how long do they travel to fetch water? Many miles. That's what they were doing in Egypt. So, Egypt was a land of suffering for them. A land where there was scarcity even for them. When they produce, they have to give it to Pharaoh and their people. The little bit remaining, they give them. They could not complain because they were slaves. It was a land of oppression. They didn't have their freedom even to worship as they wanted to worship. That is why when Moses came and faced Pharaoh, the first thing he said was, let my people go. Pharaoh said, to do what? And Moses said, to go and worship. And Pharaoh said, no. They even restricted their worship. It was a land of slavery. But thank God, God delivered them. But you know what? When you are in the world today, when you are not born again, you are also in Egypt. Egypt typifies for us today life without Christ. When you are without Christ, we call it in the church vocabulary, we say you are in the world. All right? If you are here, you are not born again. You are in the world. That in the world simply means for us, you are in Egypt. And Egypt is a place of deprivation. Egypt is a place where when you do your farm or your business, you have to water it by what? By food. You have to do manual labor. You have to toil. The word toiling and the results you get will be little. But Moses went on to say, but God is taking you into the promised land and he described the promised land. He gave a vision of the promised land. In verse 11, he said, where God is taking you to is a land of hills and what? Valleys. And he said, it's a land which drinks water from the rain of heaven. That is my excitement today. That where God is taking you to, that's what he told them. It's not like Egypt, which is a dry desert-like land. Where your farm, you have to water it by food. But the promised land is a land which drinks water from the rain of heaven. Child of God, I want to tell you. When you got born again, when you received Jesus and you got born again, God has put you into the promised land. When you are a Christian born again, you are already living in the promised land. You've been taken from Egypt and straight into the promised land. Say, Pastor, are you sure of that? Yes! For the Israelites, they had to pass through wilderness. For me, Colossians 1, 12, 13 says, He has translated me from the kingdom of darkness and he has brought me. He has brought me straight away, straight away, straight away when I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior and Jesus came into my heart. Hey, buddy, I got into the promised land immediately. In the twinkling of an eye, I am in the promised land. That's why the New Testament, 
writing the epistles to the Christians. So always talk about those of you who are in him. When you in him, you have the redemption. In him, you have this. In him, you have that. Check the Bible, the New Testament. The in him, everything which is said that you have in him. When you check the Old Testament, it's the kind of things God promised the Israelites they will get in the promised land. So if your life is in Christ Jesus, you are in your promised land. You are not in the wilderness. Hallelujah. In Christ. I am in Christ. Ephesians 1 3. It says, In Christ, God has blessed us with how many? All the blessings of the promised land. In Christ. In Him. In Him. He said, You have redemption by the blood of Jesus. So, all those 10 plagues, all those periods, and all those battles Moses did to take them out once I get into Christ. The blood, the ace, the ace, everything has been relieved for me. So in Christ, I've been delivered from Egypt. In Christ, I'm living in God's promised land. Hallelujah. The promised land, the land he promised them. But me in Christ now is a land of promises. There are so many promises for me in Christ. That's why in Romans chapter 8 verses 1 and 2. He said, therefore there is now no more any condemnation for them that are in Christ. For the law of life and spirit has set me free from the law of death and sin and Egypt. He has set me free. Once I'm in Christ and my life is in the spirit, I have been set free from Egypt and I have been set free from everything that will produce death through sin in me. I am in a promised land. Hallelujah. And let's see then what God told the people of Israel through Moses concerning the promised land. What he told them. Praise God. He said, let me read again for you, verses 10 and 11. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come. Where you sowed your seed and watered it by food as a vegetable garden. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys. Which drinks water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it. From the beginning of the year, January 1st, 2013. To the very end of the year, December 31st, 2013. You said the eyes of the Lord are upon the land. And I am already in the promised land. So God's eyes are upon me. From the time we cross over to January. And his eyes are upon me till we will reach December 31st. Why? Because I'm in God's promised land. But the thing about the promised land, he said, the promised land brings water from the rain of heaven. So that when they entered Canaan, the promised land, they don't need to go and fetch water to water their farm, farms again for the products to grow. God himself, he has brought them to the place where the land is now rain fed. God's blessings from heaven will fall upon the one who is in Christ as in the promised land so that that person will not toil as people toil in Egypt. There's a difference between the people living in the promised land and people living in Egypt. Just like light was in Goshen but darkness was in Egypt. Are you hearing me? 
So, Moses told them, the sufferings you suffered in Egypt, even to let your things grow, he said, you won't suffer them in the promised land. The promised land, the increase and growth are by the blessing of God. And the blessing of God will fall like rain upon the land. So, as I am in the promised land, I am the one he is describing there that the land itself drinks water from the rain of heaven. And he was speaking metaphorically. Have you seen land that would take a cup and go and drink water? But God said, hey, 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 hey. Well, after them, he said, where I am taking you to? Me, I step straight into the promised land. Because that is what happened to us under the new covenant. Under the new covenant, when salvation is to take place in your life, you are not passed through the wilderness. Once you receive Jesus, he translates you. He takes you out and puts you into, in him. You are in him. Hallelujah. If you like, when you are reading the Bible... When you are reading the New Testament, make a note of all in Christ, in Christ Jesus. And tell yourself, that's where you are. That's the promised land for you. You are in Christ. And so, when you are in Christ, the beautiful things describing is this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That your life, your life should be drinking water from the rain of heaven in Christ God has fashioned you that heavens will open over your life and water you praise God verse 14 and he said oh let me go through verse 13 first and it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will give you the rain for your land in each season. So, there is one crucial point. He said, when you go to the promised land, the land itself drinks water already. But you need to have rain falling on you so that the land can drink the water. And he gave them one simple condition. Sometimes when I'm reading the Bible, I come across the commandments I fear. When I read here what he said, he said, if you will obey my commandments which I command you today, and he proceeded to summarize the commandments. And the commandments are simple. He said, to love the Lord your God and serve him with what? All your heart and with all your soul. Then I will give you the rain for your land. When you enter the promised land and you love the Lord your God and you serve him with all your heart, he said the heavens will open over you and rain will fall upon your land. And he said the rain will fall upon your land in each season. There will not be a season where your life will be dried up and parched. There will not be a season where the heavens are shut over you if you obey the commandment of the Lord, simply loving him and serving him. It tells me one thing, even though he says the promised land will drink the water of the rain from heaven, it's not automatic that once you enter there, the rain will fall because he has given a, a condition that you love him and you serve him. So this year, if you believe you are in the promised land, 
then simply fulfill this simple condition that love the Lord your God with all your heart and serve him. Let me say that again. If you think you are in Christ and therefore you are in the promised land and you want what God is telling the people here to happen to you, all that you need to do is what? Simple. You love the Lord your God and you serve him with all your heart. You love him. You fall in love with God. And you let him know that you love him. You don't let anything else take part of your heart. You let him be the number one in your heart. Hallelujah. But I like it when you say, Then I will give you the rain in this season. Will he rain on us this year? Will he rain? Yes. Number one, are you in the promised land? Yes. Your life is in Christ. Yes. Number two, do you love him with all your heart? Yes. And do you intend to be uh, wedded to this one? <laughs> Leave all the men and be wedded. <laughs> Praise God. If you decide to love God with all your heart and serve him, then he says the rain will come upon your life and listen to what he said when the rain comes upon your life verse 14 then I will give you the rain for your land in this season the early rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grain your new wine and your oil. Hallelujah. Amen. So God was telling them when the rain falls in the promised land, he said, surely the result will be that you will be a harvester. You will harvest. You will gather in grain, new wine, and you will gather in oil. Not for your grace. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Truth Table with Reverend Wisdom Dafiamapo of Grace Chapel International. We believe you've been blessed even as you've listened. For copies of this tape, contact Grace Chapel International at Kanishi First Light, opposite Accra Academy, or call us on 0243-716-804. And remember to always walk in His amazing grace.